These B's blocks in the operator control function are the ones that will be run during the operator control period. The way the robot knows which to use, whether to use the autonomous or operator control, is by the jumper which is plugged into the interrupt port. If there's a jumper in interrupt port 5, the autonomous function will run, and if there's a jumper in interrupt port 6, the operator control function will run. So what we need to do is write an autonomous program and put it into the autonomous function. Now what we'll do is use the program that we wrote before, which is conveniently saved on the disk. And that program is the one that just drove forward for three and a half seconds and stopped in the piece of paper. So to do that, we want to use the code that's already there. Now we could just retype it or redrag the blocks in and put them right into here, but there's a much easier way. Since we've already written that function once before, we can just go to user functions and say add an existing function, and it was inside of drive to paper, and it was the main function. So we click this, we say add, and it says that the name main is reserved. So that means, uh, that's because you can only have one main function in each program, and this program already has one. So we say OK, give it a new name, we'll call it drive forward, say OK, and then close this window. And now you can see that there are now three user functions here. There's autonomous, operator control, and drive forward. And drive forward has the steps which we had from before. Now a function is just really a name group of blocks. Um, that we want that we want to be able to use again over and over. So if we go to our autonomous function, double click on autonomous, and just drag drive forward into the autonomous thing, into the autonomous function is one of your uh, blocks, then when the autonomous function runs, in other words, when, you, when the robot starts up and the jumper is plugged into port 5, we'll run this code and we'll call drive forward. And drive forward will do these blocks itself and then it will return. So this is a really simple way of taking existing code and using it on um, a new program. And this, will, this is all you have to do to get autonomous to work on your robot, is just fill in these blocks. You can either fill them in directly in the autonomous section if this is a new program, or if it's an old program that you're trying to uh, uh, make work with a template, then you can just import it like we did here with Drive Forward, and then just refer to it in autonomous. That's all there is to it. Okay, now we have to write the operator control part of our uh, program. Um, as you recall, um, the way that the robot knows whether to run the operator control program or the autonomous program is by the position of the jumper in the interrupt port, either 5 or 6. If it's in port 6, um, when the, when the uh, transmitter turns on, it will run the operator control program. So to get going, uh, what we do is first select the operator control function. Uh, which we have here, and when the operator control uh, match starts, the code which is right in here will be run. So what we want to be able to do is drive um, drive our motors on our, for our wheels with the right right hand joystick. So forwards and backwards um, will be up and down on the joystick. That's joystick um, channel two, and left and right on the joystick, on, which is jan which is channel one, will uh, um, allow us to turn the robot. This type of steering is called arcade steering. And as it turns out, um, EZC has some uh, blocks in it that make arcade steering very, very easy to do. So, to, so what we need to do first is create a while loop because we want this to continue driving through the entire uh, operator controlled portion of the uh, event, and and just keep doing it over and over again. And then we pick the arcade two motor block. That's because it's arcade style steering, and we have two motors on our robot. Now, the receiver, the yellow box, is plugged into uh, receiver channel 1. It's RX, RX1, on the, the, the way it's labeled on the uh, um, robot controller. The forward reverse channel is going to be channel 2. That's the up and down um, position of the joystick on the right-hand side. And the rotate channel is going to be channel 1. That's left and right. And then the left and right motors are uh, one at motor ports 1 and 2, as we see on our uh, uh, robot map and we're good to go. So this program, which is very, very simple, will let us drive the robot uh, left and right, forward and backwards um, with just these blocks. So we're compiling the program right now, and then after it's finished compiling, we uh, download it into the robot, and, and then uh, we'll be able to test it out. So here we go, it's downloading right now into the robot controller, and, and when it's finished, um, we should see the robot driving just by using that right-hand joystick. So here we go. You can see that uh, moving forwards and backwards works, and turning left to right works, and that's all there is to it. I mean, this gets us a robot that drives. But we actually want something that's a little bit more complicated than this. 
We also have an arm on this particular robot, and your robot may have other kinds of mechanisms. And so to operate the arm, we'll do that with the left-hand joystick and moving the arm forwards and backwards, which is channel 3. Now it turns out that EZC has a module that makes this really easy to do as well, and that's called the motor module receiver. So we grab the motor module RX block off the pallet, drag it into our program, into the while loop, and again, it's receiver port 1 that we're using, and it's, in this case, it's going to be channel 3. And these channels are actually uh, silk screen. They're written right on the transmitter, so you can see which ones are which. Channel 3 is the left-hand joystick, and it's the up and down motion. And that's connected to motor 4, which is the motor that we use for our arm. And you can, look at, you can see that on the robot map. So we say OK, and that's it. So now, um, we'll compile and download this. We now have a program that will control the uh, uh, robot driving with the right-hand joystick using arcade steering, and it will control the arm with the left-hand joystick, uh, moving it forwards and backwards. And that's really all you have to do. I mean, you may have a few more motors and a few more functions, but basically, that's it. So now we can see that the uh, driving still works, and, and if we try the arm and we move it up and down, we can see that that's working now. And in fact, you can actually drive and move the arm at the same time. So that's really all you have to do to create yourself a uh, operator control program for that portion of the event. Well, I hope you found this presentation useful and that the sample programs that we saw um, are similar to the things that you want to do as you're programming your robot. Now, before we go, there's a couple other things I wanted to be able to show you. One of them is that EZC comes with a wealth of uh, examples that will help you get going. For one thing, there's a help file, which is really, really good. If you look at the help file in um, EZC, you'll see that it's got um, a whole bunch of uh, tutorials that actually tell you how to use all of the features that we've talked about. And in particular, if you go to the EZC version 2 tutorial um, and click on competition templates, then there's an example of how to create uh, competition templates for the first VEX competition. And it goes through all of the stuff that you need to do to make a, a competition project. Another really useful feature of EZC is uh, the samples which come with it. So for instance, um, if you do File and then Open Project, um, there's a samples directory which is in um, on your C drive in Program Files, IntelliTech, EZC for VEX, Projects, and then Samples. There's a whole bunch of sample programs that show you how to work um, different kinds of statements and different kinds of blocks in EZC. So for example, if you wanted to know how to work a for statement, you could click for sample, and here's a program um, ready to go that shows you how for loops work, and you get an idea of how this stuff works, and you can download it and try it in your program. Um, a couple of other things that you might want to know about um, is that on the robot controller itself, there are a couple of uh, green lights, and those tell you whether or not your receiver is operating. And uh, if, you, if, you, if the receiver is plugged in correctly and everything is working, those lights will be green. And if they're not, then you know that you, have to, you haven't plugged things in correctly or the transmitter's on the, got the wrong frequency, wrong crystal, or something like that. And you should go and check that stuff. So before you put your robot out onto the field, you should make sure that there's a green light for each uh, receiver that you've got plugged into your robot. The last thing I want to mention is that there's a uh, website out there, um, if you have internet access, called Chief Delphi. And on Chief Delphi are a bunch of forums that are um, uh, viewed by users just like you and by a bunch of uh, professional programmers. So if you, if you go to Chief Delphi, look at the forums, and you, you scroll down, um, you'll see that under um, IntelliTech EZC REC information, there's a forum which is EZC for VEX. And if you click on there and you post questions, um, you'll find that these questions are answered by users like you or by employees from IntelliTech who are the ones who actually developed EZC. So I hope all this stuff helps you out. Um, I'm sure you're going to have a really, really good time now at the competition, and, and good luck on, on getting a good autonomous program going and a, and a good operator control program, and good luck on the competition. Hope you do well.